Hello, my name is Melissa Steidemeyer and I am the Grower Relations Manager for Agrimuir Nursery in Gridley, California. In this presentation, I will be talking about an alternative model to planting conventional almonds called the Super High Density Hedge System. In this system, trees are planted in a tighter spacing, creating a hedge, which has proved to be a more efficient way of farming almonds. This modern system also achieves all four 2025 goals set by the Almond Board, which are to have zero waste from almond orchards, to reduce the amount of water used to grow almonds, to increase the adoption of environmentally friendly pest management tools, and to improve local air quality during almond harvest. It's truly a revolutionary concept that is starting to be planted in California on a large scale. So at first, I would like to share with you the advantages of planting super high density almonds, existing yield data, the economic index, and organic opportunities. I will also be discussing the entire process of super high density almond orchards, including rootstock selection, tree spacing, irrigation, mechanical hedging and tipping management, and harvesting and drying. Planting trees in a super high density hedge model has many advantages. Trees are planted in a tighter spacing, creating a hedge. The hedge system makes it easier to manage. In fact, it makes the orchard fully mechanized, which saves the grower in machinery and labor cost. Not to mention, the amount of water needed to grow almonds in the super high density orchard is less. This is because super high density almond orchards are planted with a dwarfing rootstock, which have a shallower root growth area. Perhaps the most important advantage is during harvest. Currently, most almond orchards are harvested in three passes and nuts are picked up from the ground. With super high density, you are harvesting one pass right off the tree. This method eliminates dust and improves local air quality during harvest. It also eliminates the need for pasteurization. Nuts are also harvested in the early stages of hole split, which minimizes the chances for disease and pests, such as navel orange worm and hull rot. Clearly, I think we all can agree that super high density almonds have significant advantages that all growers can benefit from. The real question everyone wants to know is what will my yields look like? I want to compare yields from some of our first super high density almond plantings so that you can see the progress we have made over the years. Agromiora has been working on the super high density almond concept for more than 10 years. Several modifications such as planting distances, hedging management practices have been modified in order to get the most efficient and profitable planting model. The first super high density almond orchard or version one was planted in 2010. Trees in this model were planted 13 feet by five feet and was grown with a central access. As more and more super high density orchards were planted, it was realized that we needed to modify the tree spacing in order to optimize light interception and canopy efficiency. So in 2014, we planted a version two planting model that had spacing of 11 feet by four feet and no central access. The no central access model encouraged more branching, which has resulted in higher yields. The most fundamental discovery we made is that a hedge greater than 36 inches wide led to dead space in the interior of the hedge. It was clear that we needed to move the rows closer together, so we modified the tree spacing to 10 feet by 4 feet, also known as version 3. And it was determined that a 36 inch wide by 9 foot tall hedge was the maximum hedge size with optimal efficiency. With that said, version 3 has proved to be the most efficient and most profitable model to date and is currently the planting model all super high density almond orchards are following. In this graph, you can see the comparative yields between version two and version three. 
Version 2, the 11 foot by 4 foot spacing model, is represented in blue. Version 3, which is the 10 foot by 4 foot spacing, is represented in red. The dotted red line was what we thought this model could yield, and as you can see from the graph, that the results have exceeded our expectations. Third year almonds produce 1,800 pounds per acre, and in the fourth year, yields reach 2,700 pounds per acre. It's simple, really. More hedges per acre make more almonds. A 10-foot spacing versus an 11-foot spacing leads to 9.9% more bearing canopy per acre. Some of our more adventurous customers in Europe are even trying higher efficiencies by planting at 9 feet. But it will be years before we know if, if this results in higher efficiency and yields. One other thing to point out is that when you're looking at these yields, you have to remember, these are yields coming from orchards that are primarily in Spain, which means these are hard shell Spanish varieties. Since California almonds are primarily thin shell, it's reasonable to expect a higher meat yield for super high density orchards in California. The economic index corresponds to three different almond prices, $2, $2.50, and $3. This index is also considering that water is $100 per acre foot. As you look at the three indexes, you will note that the rate of return of investment is paid back as quickly as five and a half years or up to nine years depending on the almond market price. This is where organic almonds become an attractive option. Not only that, it is more feasible to maintain an organic almond orchard when it's planted in super high density. The current price of organic almonds is roughly two and a half times the price of conventional almonds. In the 2019-2020 crop year, California produced 2.5 billion pounds of almonds. The final crop numbers for organic almonds were somewhere between 22 to 23 million. This equates to less than 1% of total organic production in California. This year's crop is expected to reach 29 to 30 million pounds given the higher yields and increase in acreage. Organic almond acreage has increased from 7,593 acres in the 2016-2017 crop year to 23,723 acres in 2019-2020 crop year. So, as you can see, there is a lot of opportunity in the organic market. Also, I think most growers can see that by harvesting off the tree, Managing weeds on the ground become less important. Clearly, methods for pest control and weed control have come a long way. The industry is moving forward and will take organic to the next level. And many of our super high density almond plantings that will be going in will be organic. If you take a closer look at this graph, you can see that about 49% of super high density plantings have been planted in Spain, and more are going in next year. Portugal is on the same trend and represents 26% of super high density almond plantings. Italy, Morocco, Chile, and others also play a part in the 13,000 acres of super high density almonds that are planted around the world and there are more going in every year. For California, this is a relatively new planting model. There were some experimental blocks planted in California four to six years ago, and like everything that's brand new, we learned how to improve things, like spacing and hedging practices. And now, we have some large plantings going into California that will be planted with our most current super high density planting model. The first was planted this fall off of Lovell Road in Arvin, California. This planting is approximately 700 acres with 10 by 4 spacing and was planted with Shasta on Rupac 20. 
The other two plantings we have on the horizon are going in next fall. One of the locations is in Denaire off East Keys Road, and this planting will be approximately 320 acres. Down the road, one mile southeast of this planting, will be another 315 acre planting. Both of these plantings will be planted with our 10 by 4 spacing with the same variety in rootstock, Shasta on Root Pack 20. The almond variety Shasta is an intellectual property of Birchall Nursery and has been licensed under a one-time agreement for these specific plantings. So like all super high density orchard systems, a dwarfing and precocious rootstock is crucial to the system. That is why Agromiora has spent the last two decades selecting, testing, and breeding Root Pack 20. Root Pack 20 rootstock helps produce a compact tree that still induces heavy flowering and nut set. With the hedge system, it is very important to have a rootstock that will maintain the architecture you need by still getting the yields you want. Root Pack 20 is a plum hybrid rootstock. It is highly adaptable and resistant to many soil-borne diseases, root knot nematode, and moderately tolerant of salts. It also has good adaptation to heavy soils and water logging situations. Keep in mind that your normal almond rootstocks wouldn't work in a super high density system because it would induce too much vigor and would actually increase your hedging requirements and cost while drastically lowering the yield of the hedge. This is true of all orchard systems around the world that are planting in super high density. Without the correct rootstock, super high densities orchards would not work. In order to stay efficient and maintain the hedge, all super high density commercial almond orchards that are being planted in California are utilizing self-fertile varieties. The recommended tree spacing for super high density almonds is 10 feet by 4 feet. This comes out to 1,089 trees per acre. It's normal to think that 1,089 trees per acre is a lot of trees, especially if you're not in the apple, stone fruit, or olive industry. I mean, modern apple growers are used to planting 1,500 to 2,000 trees per acre. For stone fruit, the average is 1,000 trees per acre, and olives are at 725 trees per acre. So although this seems like a high amount of trees, the reality is this is not a new practice. Super high density orchards are also the perfect solution for almond growers who are limited on water, which we all know is a major issue here in California and will likely get much worse going forward. Since Root Pack 20 puts out a shallower root growth area, it requires less water to maintain. Our experience is that in a wide variety of soil types indicate that we will only be managing a root system that's covering approximately 4 feet wide by 16 inches deep. With our recommended super high density tree spacing of 10 feet by 4 feet, a double line drip with two foot emitters with a .53 gallon per hour is ideal. Of course, different soil conditions will change the rate of water. With hedge systems on dwarfing rootstocks, the key is to have short but frequent irrigations. Our experience with super high density orchards in Spain is that the growers have been saving significant amounts and in some cases as much as 30% of water compared to a conventional orchard. So in these upcoming California plantings, we plan to closely monitor the usage in different areas. The ultimate goal of establishing a hedge is to close the space between trees and increase the height of the productive wall. In order to do that, we start the grower off with a smart tree, which is an 18 inch tall tree with branches and no central leader. To do this, we top the trees several times at 16 to 18 inches. Trees are then planted in the field with an individual 
four foot long bamboo stake and no wire is necessary for this planting. However, intensive hedging is required in the tree's first couple years until the hedge is created. To develop your hedge height, you will have a total of seven vertical toppings. Each topping is done at every foot, which creates new branching and fruitful buds. The first one is done at when the tree reaches a height of 20 to 24 inches, second at 36 inches, third at 48 inches, fourth at 60 inches, fifth at 72 inches, sixth at 84 inches, and the last at 96 inches. At each cut, you should remove two to four inches. You will maintain the hedge height at 108 inches or nine feet. To develop your hedge width, you will have two light lateral tippings. This will help eliminate the growing points and redirect the growing energy towards the branches. The first one is at 10 inches of growth from the trunk, and the second lateral tipping is at 18 inches from the trunk of the tree. At each cut, you should remove two to four inches. You will maintain the hedge width at 36 inches or three feet. Once the hedge is established by the end of the second year, maintaining the hedge only requires a quick single hedging pass each year. There are already a wide variety of harvesters available in California for commercial hire. Harvesters for olives are equally suitable to harvest almonds. So harvesters like the New Holland Browd or Oxbow Harvester would work for a super high density almond orchard. Nuts are harvested early at hull split when kernel and hull are approximately 12% moisture. This reduces the amount of time hulls are open and will potentially eliminate any crop damage due to any pests or diseases. Also, being able to harvest in one pass with super high density almonds will greatly reduce debris, soil, and pebbles being transported to the processing facility. According to the EPA, orchard debris, soil, pebbles represent 10 to 25 percent of the field weight of material brought to the almond processing facility. On average, field weight yields 13 percent debris, 50 percent hulls, 14 percent shells, and 23% clean almond meats. By harvesting off the tree, almond growers will be able to deliver a cleaner and more hygienic product to the processor. The almond board researchers have been working on various drying techniques for several years now. It is estimated that drying costs will be in the range between two to four cents. The good news is that various types of drying systems will dry almonds very well and some of these drying systems are already being installed at almond processing facilities in California. This demonstrates that the almond industry already has drying options that are commercially feasible for almond growers. So, as you can see, the almond industry is already advancing and is even now equipped for the super high density model. It's now time to start thinking about the future of almonds and how we solve the very real challenges that the California almond industry is facing. Namely, harvest dust pollution, waste from production and processing, ever more limited water, and pest control. The super high density hedge is a proven system that largely solves these issues. It is also by far the most sustainable system going forward and because it is also 100% mechanized can be the most efficiently profitable approach to almond growing in the future. And last but not least, the super high density system opens up the opportunity to growers to expand into the currently small but rapidly growing organic almond market. All of these advantages together allow growers to diversify the current and future risk in growing almonds while achieving a profitable operation far into the future.